Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lily, and I am so happy that you are here with me today. In today's video, we are going to work on a new little house project, a new whimsical take on my little houses made from envelopes. Yes, just a plain, simple envelope new, repurposed junk, whatever you have, we're going to turn them into whimsical little haunted houses. Look at how cute they are. Pockets. They are cute. They are journaling cards. You can turn these into whatever you like. And I started making these whimsical little envelope house pockets. Gosh, that's a long name. Earlier this summer, and I started with just the whimsical houses, and then I did some Christmas houses. And then why not? Let's do haunted houses. And that is what we are going to do today. I have more thorough videos as far as the process. I believe when I first started, um, the process was a little bit slower. So I'm going to go kind of fast today. At least I think it's kind of fast, but... I, I hope it's not too fast for you. We've got plenty of time to make these. I made these three off camera, but on camera, I am going to show you how I make the base of it and then how I embellish it. And I am basically shopping my stash. I am using um, scrapbooking papers that I have had for many, many, many years, probably like 2012. And I know that because some of these stickers are dated and the stickers go back to 2002. So I'm guessing the papers go back to 2012 because some of the stickers are 2012. What I'm trying to say is <laughs> this stuff is old. So we need to use it. Let's shop our stash. And I'm kind of showing you how they, how they flip open. Some of them will lay and open completely flat like this one and others they have a little curve and that just depends on the type of glue that you use and the type of scrapbooking paper or collage papers that you use to collage over the pocket so it's entirely up to you don't second guess it don't think too much about it just go through your stash of fall or Halloween because that's what we are working on today grab yourself a number 10 envelope a junk mail envelope or a new one like I said and I am pointing down because I do have a lot of other videos um, where I show you how I make these little whimsical envelopes and I will link all of those down below I also have a playlist where I play with all kinds of envelopes or just go to my homepage on my YouTube channel and you can go to my videos and you'll see all my videos there you can even search within my channel and just enter the keywords little houses and you'll get the whimsical ones and the Christmas ones that I've worked on. So the first thing we are going to do is seal the envelope. If you're using a junk mail envelope, it's already sealed. So you are one step ahead of me. <laughs> so we are just going to seal it. And did, did you see what happened to my tip there? The needle, the little pinhead of my stainless steel pin broke off of my needle or my pin. And so now the pin is wedged into the fine tip. And anyway, I need a new tip. And so this black tip, it's fine, but not that fine. And so I get more glue than I want. I still use it. I spread it and then I just use my finger to spread it. It dries fairly quickly. So, but use whatever adhesive you have, tape runner, glue gun, and I kind of switch between, not, I don't mean glue gun, I mean glue stick, glue stick. So use whatever you have handy. I will switch between all three as, as I, as I move on with the video. So, okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to go shop your stash. I keep most of my, well, yeah, most of my Halloween embellishments and scrapbooking papers in a 12 by 12 keeper. And I will show you what that looks like in just a moment. 
So right now, once you have sealed your envelope, we are just going to trim the very top of it, just a little snippet, because all we're trying to do is create an opening. So that's why I said, if you have a junk mail envelope, you were one step ahead of me. And so you just make sure you have one open, um, one of the ends is open. And then just fold it over. And I don't measure, I just kind of eyeball it. But that looks to be about two and a half inches. Just fold it over. All depends on the size of little house that you want. And so that flap is going to be the roof line. And so you can make it as big or as little as you want. After a while, once you start making these, you'll notice that you're kind of folding in the same, um, the same length. And I don't measure anything and all of my envelopes are like the same size. Isn't that crazy? All my little houses are the same height. So <laughs> you'll get the hang of it. And so this is right here. You might want to, might want to rewind this part. This is, I, I cut the sides. Okay. I slit the sides and I went a little bit past that crease because I want to leave a little opening so you can get your fingers into the pocket. And that is what I'm showing you. So this is the part where I say I go a little bit fast when I show you this part. But I have a video that I made in 2020, you guys. 2020. And that is my most popular video. And is it is actually on my homepage. And I will link it down below where I show you how I make this envelope. And that was just a plain pocket back in 2020. And it wasn't until this summer that I created the little houses from that same concept. So all those videos... All of that is linked down below, or again, like I already said, I don't want to, I don't want to sound redundant, <laughs> but they're on my video, on my, on the videos on my YouTube channel. So yes, if I missed anything, please let me know, let me um, know down below and I am happy to elaborate. I've already made a few off camera. Did you see how I left? part of the inside of the envelope, how it's folded over. That is just to reinforce that little, um, the pocket on the top. Do you see that fold over right there? It's, I folded it over. I didn't cut it completely off and then I glued it down to reinforce it because it's a pocket. We want to make sure it's sturdy for all the goodies and things that you can put into these pockets. And these can be used in lieu of greeting cards. And they can, you can put tags, gift cards, money. You can put money in these. So, so these aren't just um, little, little pockets. They're also like a card. You can use these as a greeting card. I like to put them in my junk journal journals as a floating pocket. But stick around. Do not jump ahead because I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you two different ideas. And I think it's going to blow your mind. I say that it, it blew my mind. And, uh, and I showed it to my sister and it blew her mind. She just thought it was way cute. So I hope that your mind is blown. So don't go away. Stick around. Right now I am showing you that this envelope is about four inches wide, actually four and one eighth of an inch. And that other green paper with the witch's hat, that one was just shy of four inches. So it left a gap on the edge that was too wide for my liking. I'll save it for a different size envelope, maybe one that's a little bit smaller in width. And this cute pumpkin scrap paper, I cut it down to four inches, just shy of four and one eighths of an inch because we're going to line the inside of this pocket. And I want to make sure that it slides in just enough to cover that blue section. We're not going to line all the way through. There's no point. Just what's visible. So I'm just going to tuck it in maybe about an inch into the pocket and adjust it. Make sure it's even on all sides. And then I'm going to glue it down. And I'm actually going to hold it in place right here. So you could see it's inserted about one inch, hold it in place, add my adhesive. 
Do you see how it's not, the glue is not as fine as if I were using that stainless steel tip, but that's okay. I just smudge it across with my finger and then just glue it in place. Make sure it's even on both sides. And I'm not going to trim it. I'm just going to fold it over because I'm, I want to line the rooftop. So we're lining the inside of the envelope. And then I'm going to fold it over and line what would, what will essentially be the flap of the, or the roof. As you move along, there's, keep your folds in place. So go back and maintain your creases, especially if you're using or working with heavier cardstock, you'll lose that crease or that fold. And so as you layer your scrapbooking papers, um, keep folding and creasing so you don't lose it. So it's easier to keep the folds in place. I have to do it with this paper because it's heavier than other papers I've used in the past. This is a heavier type of cardstock. You can use collage papers and um, printed copy papers that are lightweight, and then you don't have to worry so much about the folds. And now I'm gonna fold it over again. I'm basically just covering the roof in quotation marks, our roof. And now it is entirely up to you if you want to collage or cover the backside of the little house. I usually don't, but you could. I have in some, but for the most part, I leave them blank. And the reason being, I use these as floating pockets in my junk journal and I leave that blank space on the back for journaling. But, you know, it's personal preference. You can use beautiful papers on the back. You know, whatever, you can cover it with washi tapes, which I have also done. And I have my washi tapes ready to go here on the table just in case. The purpose, the main purpose of this video is hopefully to inspire you and give you the idea and then you run with it. You do with it what, what you wish. If you don't want to make little haunted houses, you can make the Christmas houses that I made. Those turned out so cute. Or you can make um, just whimsical, just generic whimsical little houses. And I have used, in the past, I have used scrap papers to collage and also for all of the other little components like the doors, the windows, the chimneys, I use scrap pieces of paper and shape them into the shape them into door frames and windows and chimneys. And so if you don't have stickers, just use scraps. Use your punches to punch out rectangles and squares and circles and triangles and use that. We're basically paper piecing. I just happen to have a lot of Halloween cardstocks and Halloween stickers. And I am on a mission to shop my stash and use things that I've been holding on to for, you know, tens and tens of years. <laughs> so here is one that I have already collaged or covered off camera. And I'm pointing out all of the cute little stickers and oh, just all the cute little things. And when I say I'm giving you the idea and you run with it, it is your opportunity to shine and to make it however you want. If you want, if you don't want it cute and you want it grungy, then you make it grungy. If you want it shabby, then you make it shabby. It is, it's all you. You make in your own style. I am sharing the idea with you. I do have a scrapbooking, excuse me, a Facebook. So if you make these and you would like to share those with me, I will have my Facebook link down below as well. Please share. I would love to see what you create. So this is my 12 by 12 craft keeper. I am giving you a sneak peek at the contents. And these are stick, you guys, these are stickers from 2012 and 2002. 
They are so stinking cute. And then I have tags. I have things that I have stamped and die cut from a long time ago. I think this was a Tim or is a Tim Holtz um, Stampers Anonymous stamp set that I fussy cut at one point many years ago. And then other die cuts that I at one point was probably going to use in some type of scrapbooking layout. I used to scrapbook a lot more. And so that's, and card. I made a lot of cards. I was, I'm still a card maker. I love me. And I'm still a scrapbooker. So I, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I just used to do it a lot more before. I don't do it as often, but I, I still do it. Okay. And these are all just bits and pieces. I believe this one here with the little white stickies on the back, that was something a friend of mine gave me in a swap. Isn't that gorgeous? So shop your stash, use your punches, use your dies, and create yourself a collection of things that will be perfect for Halloween theme. These are wooden or little, yeah, little wooden um, witches hats that I think are from Dollar Tree. And I had no idea I had these beautiful journaling cards. And again, these are from uh, 2012, 2013. They are so stinking cute. I don't use those today. But I'm glad I found them. Well, they weren't lost, but they were, they were dug deep between all the cute things, all the things in my little craft keeper. I love using the 12 by 12 craft keepers and I do have a lot of them that are sorted by theme and so the orange is for Halloween. I do have I think a green one for Christmas and then just um, I coordinate the colors of the craft keepers with the holiday. These are thickers from 2012 <laughs> and I use a little trim there for that roof line. Oh my gosh, so stinking cute. And I really didn't have a plan. I had first collaged the envelopes and then I opened up my craft keeper. And then when I saw all these cute little things in there, I just went at it. This is a little treat bag that I made for the trick or treaters, gosh, maybe 10 years ago. And I saved one. And I. I made about a hundred of these, you guys. Every year, I make about a hundred treat bags for all the little kiddos that come knocking at the door, and then I fill it full of full of goodies. and And then once those one hundred treat bags are gone, then I have big bowls of like full size candy bars for the kids, and I don't turn anybody away. I welcome the teenagers. You know, a lot of the times I have heard that people will say, oh, you're too old to be trick-or-treating. I don't think we can say that to kids. We want, them, we want them to stay young and we want them to also take part in the fun stuff. We don't want them to grow too fast. And if you've got 14, 15, 16, 17-year-olds, even 18-year-olds trick-or-treating at your door, please welcome them. You know, they're still kids. They're still kids. They're somebody's kids. I don't turn anybody away. If you're 25 and 30, I, don't, I won't turn you away. If you want to trick-or-treat at my house, <laughs> you trick-or-treat at my house. I'll give you some candy. Oh, and this right here is glassine paper. I've had this one for a long time. It is food-safe paper, but I, I don't think I bought it for food, like for cookies or anything like that. I probably... I probably thought about using it for collage or to make cute little pockets. So now we're going to put everything back in there. I just wanted to show you what it is that I have. So if you have similar items, dig them out, spread them all on your desk. I think it's easier if you're a visual person to just put everything out and just kind of sort it and then pick and choose. If you have it in front of you, chances are you will use it. And you'll see what I mean. I kind of start dumping things on my desk and use it as I'm going. These are smaller journaling cards, more like a pocket. 
pocket journaling cards. So stinking cute. I should actually put those in my... No, I'm going to leave them exactly where they are. They're Halloween themed, so I know exactly where to go and find them. I was going to say I should put them in my pocket cards with all my other pocket cards, but no, 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 no. We'll keep them right where they are. So now just kind of sorting all the little pieces because we are going to embellish two of these little, little pockets. This is cute confetti. And I've probably, it looks like I may have purchased it at Michael's. These doilies right here are so cute. I completely forgot that I had them. So stinking cute. They are spider webs. Oh my gosh. Where do they come from? I have no idea. I don't remember you guys. When I tell you I'm shopping my stash, I'm shopping my stash and I don't know where half of these things came from because I've had them for quite a while. But those are so cute. I do have a Tim Holtz spiderweb die, and it is so stinking cute. My sister came over last weekend, and she just die cut a whole bunch of those spiderwebs. So cute. So use what you have. Use a regular doily, and if it's white, stain it black if you want, or you could always hand draw. You can draw just a simple spiderweb. And so I have all of these ephemera pieces, but if you go back and look at my whimsical houses, the very first little house pocket video, most of the items that I used were scrap pieces of paper in all different shapes and sizes. As you're working, the ideas start brewing. And so it's so important to just start. I know that sometimes starting is the hardest part, but just start because once you start, you're going to be inspired by your own creations and your own work. And the ideas are just going to grow and grow. And then it's just your, your mind's just going to go faster than you can physically possibly, you just can't physically keep up with your brain. <laughs> Because all of the ideas are like imploding. <laughs> that's, that's how I feel. And I know most of you have heard Tim Holt say how he has popcorn. He's got popcorn in his head. Oh my gosh, when he said that, I totally related. Because that's me. It's like popcorn in my head. But that's his thing. He's got popcorn in his head. I, my head's just racing inside and I'm just trying to keep up with it. So notice how I have all of these cute little tags. And I like using tags as doors in all kinds of different shapes. And so that is what I am pointing out here. And that purple one there, you guys know how I feel about purple, but all of a sudden it's Halloween and I like purple. It just goes so well with the lime green and the orange. You just can't do Halloween without purple. And I do love deep purple. And I've mentioned this before. I have no problem with the deep purple, like the eggplant colors. Oh, beautiful. It's the lavender, that light purple that I just, you know, I struggle with. I don't dislike it. I just don't like it as much as the other colors. So now this little ephemera piece, I am gluing it on to look as though it is a chimney and a moon at the same time. So it just gives you the illusion that there should be a chimney there, but it's a moon. Do you know what I mean? So you don't have to have a square piece of paper or ephemera or a chimney to be a chimney. You can turn anything you want into a chimney, and that is what we are going to do. Just use your imagination. We've got a little bit of the white of the envelope showing through. You've got tons of options to cover it up. You can use a marker. You can use distress ink like I'm using here. Or you can use washi tape along the edges. Or you can leave it as it is. It's entire, there's, this is the fun part. There is no wrong or right way to do things. You do things that you like. 
And as long as you like it, it can't be wrong. Do you know what I mean? Pardon me while I take a sip of my smoothie. Thank you. Pardon me. I hope you didn't hear that. (laughs) This is, so I'm kind of sorting through. And this one right here, that is so cute. I don't know if it's a tag or if it was meant to be like a little um, headstone. I don't know, but it's a door. It's going to be a door today. It is perfect. We're just going to glue it down. And I'm using the tape runner because it makes instant contact and it it's dry. I don't have to wait for the glue to, for the wet glue to dry. Even this oval one right here, that would make a perfect door as well. You could use triangles. You can use circles. A door, doors come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. So use your imagination. I'm setting that um, that little witch's hat aside because I thought about using it like in, where the chimney goes and just stapling it in the upper right-hand corner of the little house. That would look cute. I don't think I end up doing it, but the idea was there. And I, I still have more that I am creating off camera. But... For the sake of time, I mean, I went, I went, what, 45, 47 minutes into this video trying to go as fast as I could and trying to keep, I was trying to keep it at 30 minutes, you guys. But you know what? When you're creating, <laughs> don't hold back. Just do what you got to do. Just make it happen. And now I'm taking all the little bits and pieces and just kind of filling in. So much fun. If you don't have all of these elements, but you have punches, grab yourself some punches and just start punching shapes and sizes. Now, if you've been with me for a little bit, um, you may have noticed that this is the first video of September. I think this is the only September video that I've uploaded. And I just got, I got so busy. You guys, I got so busy. Busy. I've been making stuff, but I didn't. I I didn't make the time to record videos, edit videos, voiceover videos, upload the videos, and all of that. I just I, there weren't enough hours in the day, you guys. I hope you understand. Just not enough hours because aside from the work that I do, I also took up running. And I may have mentioned it before. I took up running. All of a sudden, this 53-year-old grandma wants to run. (laughs) Now, I have been participating in 5Ks for several years. And I was doing it for fun. Look at that confetti. Oh, my gosh, that little pumpkin. So stinking cute. And I've been participating in 5Ks for several years. And I was doing it for fun. And... Last year, I participated in six 5Ks. I think this year, I've already participated in four. And then one day, you guys, one day I woke up and I thought, what if I actually trained for a 5K? What would my, what would my time be like? And I kid you not, I woke up one day and I just walked outside and I started running. And when I say running, I mean, you know, I I walk and then I run and then I walk and then I run and then I run and then I have to stop and catch my breath and then I run again. And I started doing that. I didn't know where to start. I just started. And so now I, I breathe, sleep, eat, running. It has consumed me and I love it. Oh my gosh. Who would have thought, you guys, who would have thought? Look at those stickers. Oh, so I'm looking at these stickers because any one of these can be used as a window. So I'm looking for a sticker right now to use as a window right next to the door. So that's why I'm sifting, sifting through all those stickers. My daughter, my middle daughter, Devin, she runs. 
she does 10Ks and half marathons and marathons. You know, she can run 20 miles straight, nonstop. <laughs> That's awesome. I can't do that. And then my son-in-law, Michael, he is my youngest daughter, Cayenne's husband. Michael is also a runner. He was a track star when he was in high school, a track runner. And, and now he runs. He does marathons and half marathons. And so when we do the 5Ks, we do them all together, except I'm doing a 5K and they're doing marathons or half marathons or even the 10Ks. They're way up there. And they have kind of inspired me seeing them run and perform and do so well inspired me to start running. And that's kind of how it got started. Um, my Devin, my middle daughter, Devin, she started, um, she played soccer growing up. And so my kids were, my kids were pretty much involved growing up in sports and dance. So they've always been uh, very active. Um, my oldest daughter, she likes to weight train. So she's She's training right now for like bodybuilding competitions. <laughs> That's a whole other arena. And so they're, they're fairly active. And I've always been, you know, kind of active too. But never like to run to compete or run for time. Anyway, you guys, I know I'm rambling on. I'm just so excited to share this with you. Just so that you can... Just so that you know that aside from my love of crafting and creating, I also now love running. Yes. And I am training because I have a 5K to do on October 29th. And I'm trying to finish a 5K in as close to 30 minutes as possible. I was finishing 5Ks, you guys, just taking my time doing, doing you know, my thing at my pace and I was finishing at 50 minutes, but I wasn't doing it for time. I was doing it for the participation. These papers right here are the strips at the top of 12 by 12 papers. I saved all of those, especially these because they're so cute. They have those cute little ghost images. And so I'm just trimming them, trimming them down to size and putting them along the edge of that roof line. So I was doing a finishing 3.1 miles in 50 minutes. And since I started training this summer, I run five to six days a week. And I go, f I, my distance is about 4.3 miles every day. On last Saturday, I went to the junior high track to track my miles. And I, you guys, I PR'd. PR is I, I, I reached a personal record and I finished a 3.1 miles, which is a 5k in 39 minutes, 30. I, t I timed myself finished in 30, my minutes, I 39. I literally stood there and started bawling, just crying so much emotion, so much excitement. I went from, from 50 minutes, just leisurely finishing 5ks in 50 minutes to training and PRing at 39 minutes. I, I cried. I cried. <laughs> I was so excited. I was the only one on the track and I'm literally standing there just bawling full of excitement. Well, guess what happened this morning, you guys? It's kind of raining right now. And so I had to have a backup plan because I've been running outside. And so I went to the recreation center here in our city and they have an indoor track. And so I did that and I timed myself. You guys, I did 3.1 miles of 5K in 36 minutes. Blew my mind. Blew my mind. I cried. Again, I cried because I thought it was pretty exciting. Pretty exciting for me. 5K in 36 minutes where I used to do 50. Anyway, this may or may not interest you guys, but <laughs> I'm just so excited. I'm just so, because that means that I'm, I'm getting closer to that 30 minute, 30 minute goal, finishing my 5Ks in 30 minutes. The lady who won in my age, age group last year, she finished the 5K in 27 minutes. 
oh, I think it's too soon for me to say I can do 27 minutes. Um, I'm, I'm happy with the 36 and the closer I get to 30, you know, I'm ecstatic. That's awesome. Um, if I can get to 27, oh my gosh. But I'm thinking next year, I'm thinking I'm going to, I'm going to start training for 10 Ks. Oh my gosh. Gosh, she's crazy, you guys. This lady's crazy. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lillian. I'm a 53-year-old grandma, and I just started running. <laughs> that sounds hilarious. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the task at hand, because y'all know me. Squirrel. Look at how cute that purple door looks like. It was a tag. Gluing it down, now it doesn't look like a tag. Now it looks like a door. And again, grabbing other stickers in different shapes to create windows. So, so cute. You can take this. You can take this so much further and create. Create, create actual windows. And I do, I have die cuts. Not die cuts. I have dies that um, will punch out windows. But that would mean I have to take out, So, oh my gosh, I can only imagine what the room would look like. I have to pull out the dies and then pull out my big shot. I could, but I want to use all of these little bits and pieces here. But if you do, if you don't have these little bits and pieces and you have dies that will punch out windows and doors and little chimneys. Oh my gosh, can you imagine how stinking cute these little whimsical houses would look? So many ideas, you guys. And I know earlier I said, you do, you do, and you create in your own style. So I'm creating, I love all of these cute little Halloween pieces. But I also want to create a few grungy ones because I love the grunge too. And I also love the shabby. And I love the whimsical. And I love the painty messy. I love it all. And sometimes I try to take all of those different styles and meld them together so that they can work together in one project. And you can do that, you know. There's no right or wrong. Creating is fun. Creating is to expand your, your creativity and your imagination and just make make beautiful things. I'm pulling out some of these cute little gems. These happen to be from Dollar Tree, and I'm just gluing them down. In hindsight, I should have used adhesive to make sure they stick down, and I'll show you why as we progress. So here we go. Again, I'm taking one of the stickers to make it appear as though it is a chimney. But it's pretty lightweight sticker, so I am going to reinforce it with some of this scrap packaging just to sturdy up the sticker. Except if you've noticed there, I stuck it on the blank side. The blank side I meant to put on the other side because when I flip it over, you're going to see that <laughs> the packaging print is going to be on the back. <laughs> but I didn't want to redo it. It's going to serve its purpose. It's okay. I like working with junk. These are, these are basically junk, um, junk journal ephemera. So it's okay to use the junk. And now just uh, getting it all ready. See, you could see the packaging print on there. That's okay. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. And you have options. I have stapled these little faux chimneys um, to that flap. Or you could just tape it down. If you staple it, you want to make sure you don't staple it through where the flap will be shut. You just staple it to the top flap of the roof. And here I'm only gluing it halfway down so that it protrudes from the top a little bit, giving it the look of that chimney. Oh my gosh, so cute. And I don't mind that I covered up the trick-or-treat because we all know that it says trick-or-treat. So you don't need to have, don't be afraid to cover things up and to layer. It's there 
and you know it's there and you know what it means and you know what it is. I am taking my white, I think this is a uniball pen, I think. Maybe it isn't. But I'm going to take my white pen and I'm going to doodle around my purple door just so it stands out a little bit more from that polka dotted background. And that just makes it stand out a little bit. So cute. Let me know what you think down below. Have you worked on the whimsical houses before, the little pockets? Have you created any of the Christmas little houses? Let me know down below if you if you like these. I love them, and I just can't get enough of them, you guys. Um, and in the in the whimsical house video, I actually share with you how it is that I came about the idea to create these. It was just it, I was at the right place at the right moment, and. And I was inspired to create these. And I talk about the inspiration in that whimsical, little whimsical house video. Again, all of that linked down below. Love these so, so much. I wasn't going to work on Halloween journals. Um, just because I have, I have a whole list of things I want to make. But I added some in there. And so I am actually working on a couple of Halloween junk journals and I'm hoping to have those um, done pretty soon and I will be recording part of the process, not all of the process. I will definitely do a flip through and maybe show you some of the elements that I am using to make them. But oh my gosh, you guys, look at how cute they look all lined up together. You know, Standalone, they're kind of whack, kind of cartoonish, kind of, you know, I don't know, kindergarten. But when you put them all together, oh my gosh, knock it off. So I told you not to leave. I told you not to go anywhere. I told you to stick around because I've got something to show you. So aside from using these as floating pockets in your junk journals or to use as greeting cards, guess what we can also do? You can hinge them all together with washi tape. Okay. Now I'm just going to haphazardly add the washi tape just to show you what I'm talking about. So you take your time. If you're going to do this, you take your time and, and, and you create this with purpose. Here, it's just a haphazard, haphazard uh, washi tape stuck on these to hinge them together. And I'm going to do that to all of these. So stinking cute. Oh, here are the backs. I really didn't show you what the backs look like. See how they're kind of plain white? You can do with it what you wish. Leave it as it is or collage on it. So see, now we've created a little hinge and I will do that to the other three. One of the ideas when you hinge these together is you have made yourself a little booklet, almost like a junk journal envelope pocket journal. Does that make sense? I'll show you. I've got a visual for you in just a second. Because once you hinge them, they will, they'll form like a concertina, like accordion, and you'll be able to expand them, like flip, 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 flippity flip, in and out, in and out, where you can use it as a journal. Oh my goodness. And then inside you can tuck in a picture and journaling cards and tags. How awesome is this? This would make the best birthday gift for someone's birthday in October, right? Yes. So stinking cute. The second idea I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you in just a little bit. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what it is now. But you don't even have to do anything different. It's this. So you hinge it together. Come on, Lillian, go faster so you so I could show. <laughs> don't jump ahead. Please don't jump ahead because then you miss you miss my rambling. And I actually didn't think of this until I was working on it. I mean, I I I had the idea, but I didn't think I was going to execute it during this video. But then I thought, why not? Let's just do it. And so I really didn't think the washi tape through. So some of it is wider, some of it is thinner because I don't want to cover up 
too much of the um, of the elements or the embellishments on the on the front envelopes. So you can see here, I'm just using a thin piece of washi tape so I don't cover too much up. And now they're all hinged together, doing the back just for some reinforcement. I love all of those Halloween washi tapes. They are so stinking cute. And look at that here, you guys. Oh my gosh. They are now like a little booklet. All of the little roofs, they all open up. The other thing you can do with these is you can make a little haunted village and they stand up on a mantle or on a tabletop or on your coffee table. But here is where it forms a little booklet. Oh my gosh. And then you can tie, a, tie some ribbon around it to keep it closed at a closure. Do you know what I mean? So see, I'm going to fold it. There's your booklet, like a journal booklet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How cute is that? With the, imagine it with the closure and with the ribbon tie. So stinking cute. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it and I'll probably share it on, on my Instagram in the future sometime. But look, right here, this is the part where if you zigzag it, that's the term I was looking for. If you zigzag it just right, it'll sit perfect on your desktop, on a bookshelf, on your desk, on your mantle, on your coffee table, on your sofa table, on your entry table, on your kitchen island, on your wall shelf. Oh my gosh. And I'm going to show you a different view in just a moment. It's kind of hard to show you from this angle, but I'm actually going to take the camera off of the tripod and I'm going to show you what it looks like in just a second. Three, two, one, let's go. <laughs> and if you don't like this, you can always cut them. Just take your scissors and separate them again. And then you have individual little houses. But I think once you connect them, you're not going to want to take them apart. And now we have a haunted little village, you guys. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Somebody pinch me and wake me up. It's so stinking cute. So cute. Okay, come on. We're almost there. We're almost there to where I take the camera off the tripod. I actually say goodbye right here because I had to squeeze in that, that last minute part of the video. But I do appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much. And here it is from this angle. You guys are awesome. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get out there and you create a little haunted village of your own or use them however you want, but they are so stinking cute. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you. Let me know what you think down below. Do you like it? And look, see how one of the green eyes fell off of the little skull? Yeah, I needed to add more adhesive to that. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Bye.